Alright. It's weekly metal reviews with Tyler, Mizak, and Samicus. Mizak. We're doing a uh, video about our um, like top ten favorite albums ever. Uh, this is our list, not yours. You know, it'd be cool to hear yours, but if we don't have something, sorry. Um, shoot, what was I going to say? Ten to six. Yeah, we're going to do ten to six in this video, so uh, let's get her started. My number ten is uh, As Daylight Dies by Kill Switch Engage. This, uh, this band is a band that really helped me get into what that I have. Uh, what I've listened to, a lot of what I've listened to, and this is one of the first metalcore albums that I really, really, really just love. Of all this, along with like the sentence of the show going by trivia and stuff, but uh, you know, th this album, I always have a hard time choosing Killswitch and Engage's best album because all, all, to me, all four of them are amazing. Uh, I, I, I always throw it up between Alive or Just Breathing and this one, and uh. I, I just I have to go with this one. Every song on this is flawless, and uh, Howard Jones is such a beautiful voice. It's it's it depresses me that he left, but it's also cool they got Jesse back because Jesse's he's almost just as good. Uh, you know, just so many memorable riffs and memorable songs on this. You know, Arms of Sorrow, My Curse, their cover of Dia's Holy Diver is fucking killer too. Uh, it's a good album. My number 10 is Structures, Divided By, and this is a more recent album, but I would still put it on my all-time favorites. I think this album is really good. One, because, like, in this time, our scene's very oversaturated with bands that aren't worth a fuck, and this album is just a breath of fresh air in the whole entire gent, deathcore, metalcore, mathcore, hardcore, music, metal, hardcore scene. Whatever you admit, whatever makes your pussy wet, it's really a nice breath of fresh air. There's just so many catchy riffs. It's really progressive. The vocals are awesome. They have so many different voices. The singing is catchy. What more do you want? It's melodic. It's heavy as fuck. It's a great album. Um, my number ten is the album Something for Nothing by uh, Chunk, No Captain Chunk. Why? Because I feel that this band, I like pop punk music, and I feel this band perfectly, absolutely perfectly incorporates hardcore metal and pop punk into one album. And all of their songs really have something different to offer. It's not really the same thing the whole time. I mean, yeah, you could say, like, oh, this is so similar. But each song really is kind of something different. From the beginning, Born for Adversity, it has a really uh, hardcore feeling song. Uh, has a hardcore feeling to it. In Friends We Trust, really pop punky. Um, what else? Sink or Swim. That's really pop punky, but it's different than In Friends We Trust. It's like a lot of variation, and it's just something really different. There's no band like that. I love the way Bert has his uh, French accent. You can't pronounce H's, and like um, fuck the song third track that slipped my mind, Captain Blood, where he starts singing like really fast and kind of like does this weird thing where he sings this weird way, but it's so cool and they're just different, they're really different and something else out there. My number nine is Wormwood by the Casey Strain. Uh, this is probably one of the most pissed off, <coughs> if not the most pissed off albums I've ever heard. Uh, just the whole kind of uh, like slow, brutal, you know, ness to this album is just fucking amazing. Like in Hills Have Eyes or something, like you just can't capture the heaviness that this band creates. And Vincent just writes some of the best lyrics I feel. Uh, this band, they're just angry, they're pissed off all the time, and they're just so in your face and up your ass. And, uh, you know, this album really helped make Casey Strain one of my favorite bands. This guy showed it to me. I <laughs> still remember that car ride. Oh yeah, my <laughs> mom and dad were driving. Yeah. We were like 11, not really, but... My number nine is Meshuga. Obzin. Obzin. 
This album is a masterpiece in itself. If you don't like this album, you're kind of lost, pretty much really lost, and you've been hiding under a rock in the metal scene for the past couple of years. But anyway, this album is just fucking heavy as shit. I think this took heavy to a whole entire new level, into a whole entire new, like, direction. It did so much, like, it just took what metal had to offer and put it, threw it in a whole entire different spin, gave it, gave it like a new theme. I don't know how to explain it, but this album is just so, like, unique, and it's just heavy as fuck, and it's just experimental as fuck. <sighs> you blew it. <laughs> no. Yeah. Number nine is either, you um, Rare Form. Oh, shut up. Number nine for me is Rare Form from After the Burial. Because uh, this is probably maybe one of the first uh, core, would you say, albums that I've ever gotten into. Maybe even the first. Those core as in, you know, death metal, screaming vocals and such. And, you know, really that kind of music. But, um,. I feel like this album, album has a lot to offer, even though their second album has a lot better production, in my opinion, this album has not the best production, but it still really showcases a lot of the talent from Trent and Justin and Anthony. I feel as though he's gotten better since that album vocally, but there's still his high points on, on vocals, and uh, Dan, the drummer, he's crazy in some songs. Uh, the Berserker, uh, Ometh, or... I'm not really sure how to pronounce it, like Ometh or what to I think put it's Ometh or whatever, like not what to put the pronunciation on, but that song is just crazy the whole way through, maybe one of the best solos I've ever heard in my entire 18 years of life, life too, but um, <laughs> I thought you were 10, uh, <laughs> peanuts, um, but yeah, Rare Form is a very good album. Number eight, I have uh, The Blackening by Machine Head. That's innuendo. It is, dude. Think about it. Sexual endo. Machine Head. You want some Machine Head, dude? Yeah, but anyways. Um, first time I heard this album, I creamed. Uh, the song Halo is as epic as you can get. And, uh, the, like, this is, like, to me, the, like, modern day master of puppets. And it's just, it's just flawless from start to finish. Songs like, uh, it, you know, it, it ends with the epic of Farewell to Arms, and there's Now I Lay Thee Down, then they, they just thrash your face off with songs like Beautiful Morning, and Rob Flynn's vocals are just so, you know, aggressive, and this, this whole album is just, every note is beautiful. All right, for number eight, I have Cannibal Corpse, Tomb of the Mutilated, Mutilated, um, I'm not into Cannibal Corpse as much as I used to be. Like, they used to be one of my favorite, like, top five bands back in the day. They're still one of a band that I enjoy a lot. Definitely Decapitated and Cannibal Corpse are my favorite death metal bands, hands down. But, um, this album is just... When I first got into Cannibal Corpse, I remember, like, I tried to get into them, I couldn't. I remember I downloaded this album, and I, I just got into every song, whether it's Icon Blood... Hammer Smashed Face. It's, this album is great. Um, and I feel for it, the time it came out was very, like, it was very different. Like, when you look at Cannibal Corpse nowadays, and you're a person who got into them, say, in 2000 or, like, 2010 or something, you can't, like, look, you, you can't look at them as the same as you would as in, like, 1990s or something like that. Because back in that time, there was just, like, there was kind of n nothing like it in a way. I'm sure there were bands like them, but this is just a release that made Cannibal Corpse Cannibal Corpse, and it is just a great album. Number eight for me. Eight, right? Yeah. Number eight for me is Zeppelin, or Led Zeppelin, the album number four. Because this is just a very classic album. Maybe one of the first, uh, would you say, albums that I've ever really gotten into, you could say, my entire life. At a young age, I really liked Led Zeppelin, I really liked this album. Um, it has some amazing songs on it. I don't really need to say much about it, because everyone should, you know, know something about this album, because it is legendary. But, uh, you know, Jimmy Page, first of all, Robert Plant, 
um, John on the drums, then uh, I don't even remember his name, the bassist. Never been a huge fan of his. But um, this it's a very legendary album. You should know why it's big. I don't even need to say. So. Seven. Number seven, I have uh, Rust in Peace by Megadeth. Uh, I used to hate half this album, but I don't even know why. It just just didn't hit me as much as songs like Hangar 18, Tornado of Souls did. But, uh, you know, this album, then I got into it, I was just like, damn, I'm stupid. And uh, this is like one of the best thrash metal albums of all time, one of the best heavy metal albums of all time. This is just really, to me, uh, this was like the last really, really, really great thrash album until like this year with Creator. And, uh, you know, Dave's vocals, while they're not the strongest, they are pretty damn, you know, good on this album. Like, he's not the best singer, that's what I mean by that. But, uh, you know, Marty Friedman, this is, I just, his solos are, almost make this album to me. His solos are flawless, you know. Uh, the two that he does in Holy Wars are just so amazing. And then my favorite solo of all time, Tomato Souls. It's just, this is a classic album. And uh, definitely Megadeth's best. My number seven is Slipknot, Volume 3, The Subliminal Verses. Um, now, this album got me into heavy music as a whole, pretty much single-handedly. This band did pretty much... Um, the first song I ever heard, I've probably said this before a few times in our videos, the first song that was, like, actually metal, that's, like, considered metal by a lot of people, was Duality, and that, I remember I heard that song, and I didn't, like, I never heard, like, heavy distorted guitars or palm muted riffs or tremolo picking, anything along those lines, screamed vocals, double bass, or anything like that. And I just remember, like, shitting my pants. I was in fourth grade. And I didn't want to go to school, I wanted to listen to Slipknot, because I really liked the song. But, in all seriousness, this album like really got me into heavy music. I am thankful for Slipknot being there, so I could get into bands like Meshuga, Cannibal Corpse, or structures like that stuff. Um, but, as an album, it's still a really good album. A lot of their hits are on that one. And, if you've never heard of Slipknot, you should go listen to Slipknot, and you can hear, hear them. Uh, my number seven, either you're going to call me gay, or you're going to be like, this isn't their best album. But I had Paramore, Brand New Eyes, because when when I'm usually not listening, when I'm not listening to metal, I'm listening to rock, or, you know, still rock music, I guess, is considered. But one of my, maybe even my favorite non-metal bands would be Paramore, because... Um, when you really look past the gayness of a guy liking this band, you find some really cool stuff. Like, um, Haley Williams is just an incredible singer. A lot of people will say she's whiny, or some, I've heard some people even say she's monotone, which I don't understand. But she's a very, very talented singer, um, really just wails her voice, and it sounds so great. A lot of good lyrics. Um, Taylor York is an, he's a great guitar player. Um, uh, this is a, that was her uh, last album, and after that album, uh, Josh and Zach quit the band. But um, I was in Paramore. Wolf, no, uh, uh -huh. the, whatever his name is. Um, but yeah, uh, I think that I have this. Blah, 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 blah. I feel this is a very strong album in a non-metal sense. If you like music like this. It's it's just an amazing album. I can really see why this band has so many very, very loyal fans. It's a very, they're a very good band. Sure, they're not the Faceless being technical, or they're not Oceana being brutal, or they're not uh, even Metallica being that legendary, or anything like that. But, you know, for a non-metal band, they're pretty amazing. Number six, I have uh, The Sound of Perseverance by Death. Uh, to me, this is their best album, definitely. I mean, Symbolic is a masterpiece, too. But I, I just would pick this up over Symbolic any day. Uh, you know, 
Chuck Skaldner has some of the best riffs ever. You know, this band started death metal, and you know, then they just progressed to, to such a much better band than their early death metal albums. Although I still like them too, but like, and then you you hear a uh, song like uh, "Voice of the Soul," and that that song is just so uh, it, it's spellbinding and it gives chills every time you listen to it. It's just, this is such a classic. It's emotion and, through music. Yeah, it, it's like emotion without having any vocals at all, you know, there's so much emotion put in that, just that one song. And then you listen to Chuck's vocals and there's just so much emotion and just, you know, angst and everything in, in them too. It's just amazing. This is a really, really fucking good album. Yeah, R.I.P. Chuck. <laughs> I don't know what you just said. <laughs> My number six is Slayer, Seasons of the Abyss. Um, now, like Slipknot, Slayer was another step up into wh where I got into my career as a metalhead. Let's put it that way. Um, this album is what I think Slayer's but like album best album by far, as like all my pretty much probably I'd say like at least a few out of my top five favorite Slayer songs off this album. Just the whole entire theme of this album is evil, it's angry, it's aggressive, it's just a hell of an album for the time it's put out. Um, I think the, just the musicianship on this album is the best Slayer's done, I think. And um, I just really enjoyed this album. When I was like 13 and angry and rebellious, I listened to this album a lot. Number six, let me get into this shit. I have Pathology, Awaken to the Suffering. If you've never heard of Pathology, you are fucking gay. Because this band is so heavy and so... Oh my gosh, they are just incredible. Um, especially this album, just the whole way through, it's heaviness. Um only thing I do not like about this album is the, uh, fuck. The one instrumental that they have where it's just like a breakdown, kind of, I thought that was sort of silly, being, them being like a really good death metal band to have like this sort of breakdown thing going on, but that was cool, either way. And they had a cool lead over top of it. But the instrumental at the end of Revocation of the Earth, or Revocation of Earth, that was amazing. Um, Kevin did a good job, writing, a great job writing that song. And um, just the whole album is so unbelievably heavy and crushing, and everything about that album is just so sick. Um, they even got the singer from Inherit Disease on there, and he's crazy. And John Huber with his, I'm not sure exactly what style to call that, but low, 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 so low that they're not even low, um, as low as you can go. It's like he's playing Limbo or whatever. but. He's crazy on that album. Everything about that album is so unbelievably heavy and amazing for any band to do. Stay tuned for part two. Yes. yes. Subscribe.